Hi, my name's Steve and welcome to the Seaside Allotment Channel. I'm just in the polytunnel, um, giving my two hours on the plot, which I try to do each day at the moment. And it is lovely. It is so peaceful. And there's nobody here, although I've just heard somebody arrive. Um, and it's time for a tour. I always like doing the tours because I love looking at the difference from month to month. And I really like going back and looking at tours from previous years so I can compare and see where I've done things better, done things worse. Uh, but there's a lot of luck involved when you garden uh, at the extremes. So you, you know, you're doing lots of early stuff and lots of late stuff. You always have to prepare yourself for disappointment. And there's a few disappointments that I'll show you as I'm going around. But generally I'm really happy. We're harvesting about 250 pounds, great British pounds uh, of veg um, a week at the moment. And yeah, it's certainly keeping me busy. Um, as I say, you know, we're only allowed uh, out for a couple of hours a day. And so this is my exercise and uh, food shop. So uh, let's get on and have a quick look around. So let's start with the polytunnel. And there's still a lot going on in here from winter and spring and sometimes it's a bit frustrating because you know I'd really like to get tomatoes and peppers in and all that sort of thing but then we have hard frosts like we've just had and then I realize it's just great having all this in here because it stops me doing too much in here um, and let's have a look so in here We've got some trumpuccinos and cucumbers. The cucumbers are not doing great. Uh, the trumpuccino is looking really nice. And I've got my kale bed here. And although obviously it is going to seed, you can't stop go kale going to seed, the benefit in the polytunnel is still really excellent quality leaves at the moment uh, and loads of them. So this will keep us going for two or three weeks um beyond the outdoor kales oops um i've got some carrots that are coming on quite nicely uh, although this plant here has got a little bit of downy mildew which you can probably see so i'm kind of washing it off with water as often as i can this is the climb one of the climbing beans i can't remember whether it's a french or a runner to be honest um, but as you can see it's doing really nicely I've got one that's climbing a bit faster but this one's doing pretty good I've got early potatoes they're okay a little bit of frost burn on the tips more kales and then these are center cut squash uh, this is a climbing squash a bit like a trumpuccino but slightly smaller great alternative to courgettes lettuce bed looking a bit bare because it only harvested it a couple of days ago but it's still looking pretty good although we do like the uh, center cut squash as an alternative we have got uh, a nice little uh, courgette there first courgette just on its way and then another bean uh, oh, that's a climbing french bean there and it's pretty tall now. It's about three and a half foot. I did think it was a bit bigger, but uh, yeah, there's a little bit of frost damage on this. You can see, but I'm hoping that it survived that one. And then we've got some more carrots. They're doing pretty nicely. And look, those cucumbers, they might make it, but I will we set those anyway. I've got so many cucumbers at home, I'm not really so worried. And then the more carrots and the cauliflowers are really bulking up now under here. It's really nice to have these cauliflowers to help us navigate the hungry gap. And same with the calabrese. So early May, hopefully, we'll see something out of these. And then on the grow bench, a few perennial kale cuttings, what's left of the onions, red cabbages. We're looking pretty good. They're going to be planted out early May, so they'll be a bit big by the time they go out, but that's just the way things go. Some nice sprouts again to go out in May. Last little bit of celery to go in the polytunnel. 
and just a few other bits and pieces in the roof the strawberries are doing really well very pleased with these strawberries none of them seem to have got any frost damage so I'm really happy with that so a lot of the covers are now off and all the ones that aren't off are open so there's quite a few beds just finishing uh, it's going to be parsnip soon I've got some spring cabbages in there I need to get rid of all of that uh, salad rocket my first outdoor carrots looking really nice I'm very pleased with those and the next batch of carrots is going to go next door once I've harvested those lettuces in a few weeks time and we've got the red rubble salad kale we really like this it's a really beautiful sort of deep red sort of purpley sort of color uh, and it's it's good in salads and smoothies you can stir fry with it as well and then we've got one of the winter salad beds this is Grenoble red it's just starting to rise to seed now I don't care I want rid of it because this is where one of my courgettes is going this is one of my beds of sprouts for leaves the leaves are looking pretty good we're not far off harvesting these now but it'll be a few weeks yet um, when we've uh, completely finished with all of the overwintered kales and I've just popped in this other bed of kale interplanted into this Roxy lettuce bed and again as these kales grow the Roxy will be taken out and then we're on to the onions I'm really pleased with the way these are going thickening up really nicely and then we've got the asparagus there's quite a lot of activity on here Debbie Harvest did this, this last night so it's a little bit sparse but yeah really nice at this time of year but despite this uh, little low tunnel and a lower fleece we've lost these beans these dwarf french beans which is a bit of a shame but as i say i'm not too worried i've got loads of climbing beans and uh, so i'll just get this replanted but got down to minus 2.3 in here under the plastic and under the fleece the spinach doesn't care though that's doing really nice although we are starting to see some signs of some of the spinach beds rising to seed um, but we've got new beds on the way so not too worried about that and then we've got more sprouts here these are looking really nice and these are interplanted with spring onions and fortunately the spring onions are ready now so uh, I'm really happy with that and then down the back there I've got uh, one of the beetroot beds again interplanted with spring onions and then a little radish bed there and this is the red ruble kale that we planted in September and we've been eating all the way through winter and I've got that new bed coming it's a little bit behind this one finishing but not to worry um, this these two beds next week are going to be uh, sown with carrots I can't resist showing you the radishes though these are our third succession of radish I'm really pleased with these and then some lovely chard there's quite a few different varieties of chard in this bed and it's really coming on now um, it's not been growing that fast by comparison with the chard that I've got under cover but I suppose the nice thing about it is that just as that undercover chard is coming to an end this is kind of springing back to life so it uh, gives us a little bit of a succession so this is what just a little bit of cover does 
for the chard. We harvested this three days ago and you can see it's ready for a harvest again. It's growing at about three times the rate of the chard that's outside. It does make a big difference but this is going to be harvested uh, and this bed cleared within a few weeks. And then this is my early baking potato experiment and you'll see a little bit a frost burn on these but I'm hopeful that we'll still get a decent harvest out of these and again this is under a double skin of polythene and fleece so this is my main onion bed or rather it's the main onion bed the grown from seed and we've popped it under this little bit of fleece for a bit of protection from the wind mainly. So let's have a peek underneath. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. It's all growing really well. I really like planting my onions um, as little modules growing from seed. And I like sowing them, planting them rather, really young. And this is our little field bean bed and this is the one that we keep going for the longest because this bed or this bed is going to be the flowering brassicas so cauliflowers calabrese summer purple spouting broccoli all those sorts of things and so they won't get planted out until the middle of may probably and all that time we're harvesting these field bean tops and the field beans are building fertility in the ground and this is one of my favorite beds strawberries down the outside elephant garlic scattered around where i forgot them from last year and apple and cherry trees down the center i love perennial beds and those two round beds those are new this year and uh, I've just got to scavenge the uh, containers and I'm planting sweet potatoes in those. And this is my main carrot bed, but it did have cabbages in it. And so I've just harvested those, popped this little bed of spinach in and the carrots were planted in early May. We started harvesting the spinach last week so we should get about four weeks of spinach out of this bed so i'm pleased i took a chance and tried to get a crop out before the carrots these are going to be eskimo carrots all the way down there to the end and then we've got more spinach and there you can see what i meant about some of it starting to rise to seed and then there we've got more beetroot and then this bed's really almost ready to be cleared just a few overwintered lettuces left in here it's going to be beetroot soon but what i'm really excited about are the mange two peas these are oregon sugar pod planted while the cold frame lid was on uh, and left to grow on and then now i've just taken the, the lid off i gotta say i'm really really pleased with the way these peas are climbing. And that is pretty much it for my plot. We're just starting to get the gooseberries. I just, I love gooseberries. And then the autumn fruit and raspberries are just pushing through. And the summer fruit is looking pretty good down there too. And then just down the outer edge of my plot, next to the access drive, which we call the green drive, not surprisingly, I've got this little flower border. I've got a beautiful cherry. That's absolutely covered in blossom. This will be my first year harvesting, hopefully, off this cherry. And then we've got a couple of perennial kales, a pear tree flower border, plum tree, more flowers, 
an apple tree. Uh, this is a thornless blackberry, which is spreading very nicely. And another giant perennial kale. And we do have this little sort of planting area for alpines along the top of this pallet fence. And it doesn't look great at the moment, but in a few months time, it will look absolutely beautiful. So this is Debbie's plot. It's about 20 steps away from mine. So we've got lots of herb beds. Debbie's just planted loads of red onion sets. What, the last bit of the salad rocket. And then over there, we've got some little Romanesco cauliflowers. Purple sprouting broccoli, that's just finishing. And then we've got the black and red currants. And down the centre here, we've just put in some more asparagus. And we've got pear trees. And a plum tree, I think. Although we haven't actually had any plums off it yet. And then this border is fast becoming a perennial border. We've got all kinds of different berries down here, as well as the globe artichokes, some perennial kale in here, more berries of all sorts of different types, more perennial kales, and then we've got a little micro orchard. There's more berries as well as mainly apple trees down here, but also that rather beautiful cherry tree. A little flower border. And that is pretty much it. And now we're on Jenny's plot. And this is very much the mix of the old and the new. This is where we grow mostly for winter. Strawberries and shallots with spring onions down the centre, field beans, which we harvest for the shoots in what will soon be the brassica bed in early May. And what's left of the brassica bed. And we're doing the last harvest off this actually on Sunday. And then John's going to come and take out all those plants, which is going to be a hard job. And that will be the squash, summer squash and winter squash. This is really the last of the brassicas. Purple sprouting broccoli. And then this is the main garlic bed. And this is the broad bean bed. And it's just starting to come into flower. And then this is another strawberry bed and John just planted that with onions and spring onions down the centre. And this is our main rhubarb patch and then we've got the apple trees, Golden Delicious and Discovery and then some unnamed varieties and a pear tree and a plum tree and two more apple trees and then last but not least we've got some currants a mix of red white blue and pink or something and autumn fruit in raspberries and the beans will be going in there soon Summer squash in June, brassicas in May, lots to do. So I hope you like this quick video and I'll see you soon.